We've got the latest Arsenal team news, plus latest on some potential contract stories. Bayern Munich's up tomorrow, which means I've got an open training session to attend at the La Soba Realty Training Centre this afternoon before Mikel Arteta faces the press ahead of what is a massive week in the club season. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me and making this a part of your morning routines. It is incredibly appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic week so far and that you are enjoying uh, the, the nice weather that we get here in the UK. If you're in the UK, of course, maybe you're elsewhere in the world. But at the moment, We've had some pretty good weather, uh, although I think it's about to chuck it down this afternoon. I wake up in the morning and it's bright sunshine. And then for some reason, it just it, it just goes all wrong. Yesterday, I had a barbecue go over in the garden. It starts so well and ends so annoyingly. I think there's some parallels that I'm too worried to draw too many direct comparisons to. Um, but good morning to those joining. Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, those listening on Catch Up as well, on audio platforms or, of course, on YouTube Catch Up as well. Thank you for joining me. Martin, Global, good morning. Alva Mod, MD, Graham, Martin, Steve. We've got, uh, who else have we got in here? Graham, KY or Kai. Um, uh, Martin, Red Star. We've got Just John. We've got Steve. We've got uh, Evie, Asad. We've got Mars Cannon. Uh, by the way, all of these people, are, all these comments are from like eight o'clock because my laptop decides to do a whole entire restart. So uh, I lost all of the comments prior to like 8 a.m. But thank you to everyone that's tuned in. You are incredibly appreciated. Thank you for those that tuned in yesterday and, and dropped a like on the video. I know that yesterday's show was never going to be the most popular. You know, when we talk about Arsenal losing, some people want to escape. And I absolutely do not. I don't worry. I, I just I. I really, really encourage people to take breaks from Arsenal when they need it. And, and certainly, I think after Sunday's result, people needed those breaks. We still managed to reach 1,000 likes, which is an amazing achievement, considering, of course, the fact that uh, maybe some people... Do I heard a couple of people actually message me saying, hey, Tom, I couldn't watch yesterday's show because I was just taking a break from it, but I did dip in just to drop a like on the video, which is very kind indeed. Um, let's jump to today's stories, though. Yesterday, we did a phone-in show. Two and a half hours of phoning. Um, it's only available on YouTube. It's not available on um, on audio platforms. So if you want to watch slash listen, listen back, it is a YouTube exclusive. Um, so make sure you go and, and, and find it on the YouTube channel if you would like to, to go back and catch up to it. But yeah, two and a half hours of, of fans listening um, to different views, really a, a, a spectrum of of perspectives and uh, it was a good conversation. So certainly catch up on that if you haven't done so already. If you've got uh, maybe you're working or something and you want something to put on in the background, that was uh, certainly a good one to, to have on. Now, the under-21 sadly lost on Monday night. Yuri and Timber not involved. Again, it seems that this comeback continues to be uh, in the offing, but not yet realised. Um, they lost 5-3 to Aston Villa. Uh, I think they were 3-1 down at halftime. Two goals for each side in the second half. Led it to end 5-3 to Villa. Uh, Ethan Nuneri got on the score sheet twice. Uh, more encouragement from him and his talent and what he's capable of. And, uh, yeah, it kind of just does, I think, uh, raise questions a little bit about when we might see Julian Timber because he's still not getting that youth game back unless he's somehow going to be entering the fray on the senior side quicker than we thought. Uh, however, at the weekend, I didn't talk about this in yesterday's show because it was a show dedicated specifically to the uh, the Aston Villa game, but Arsenal uh, beats Bristol City, uh, Jonas Eideval's side, um, with goals, two goals from Beth Mead, two goals from Alessio Russo as well in a 5 nil win. Keeps the title hopes alive somewhat. They're kind of hanging on by a thread. Chelsea dropping points, Manchester City not. Uh, it's, it's obviously going to be very difficult, I think, for a Arsenal to win the WSL, but there's always a chance um, that we might yet see that if uh, we've got a hope, just like with the men's side as well, that some other teams slip up on the way to a potential WSL title. Now, Ian Wright has come out quite staunchly uh, in criticism of those supporters that left the grounds early on Sunday. We talked about this yesterday as well in yesterday morning show. I know it's a topic that splits fan opinion. I'm very much, I think, in agreement somewhat with, with Ian Wright. He said, you know something, I've got to say something about the fans. When we look back at that great Manchester United team 
the one thing they had was Fergie time. The fans genuinely got behind them and got them through it. And when you look at the amount of Arsenal fans that left the Emirates, that can be very demoralising. For the last two seasons, it's only been progression for this team. They didn't lose against Bayern. Remember what Bayern did to us before. And they came back in that game. And this time, these players need the fans to stay with it. So for them to leave like they did, it was really sad to see. Because then you're thinking they genuinely believe that's it. I was really disappointed to see that. And I don't blame him for being frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated that I sat there when we conceded the first goal. Not the second goal, which was very soon after, but as soon as we conceded that first goal, the hundreds, thousands of supporters that just got up and just started to leave. And it's just such a frustration that that happens because there's such a expectation on this Arsenal side to... Um, to succeed and that if they don't win the league, it's a massive, massive disappointment. And yet we're not willing in our entirety, in our collective support to stay and support and respond. I remember last season when Saliba scored that own goal right at the start of the season against Leicester. And when he scored that own goal, the roar, the response, the cheer that the Arsenal team got to just turn it around. It's really frustrating. Um, very, very frustrating indeed. And uh, I think Wright's words hold weight and hold truth. Um, and I hope that the fans respond in the next game. If we go, you know, if we've got really, we've got really important games still. We've got three more home games between now and the end of the season in the league. We've got Bournemouth at home. We've got Chelsea at home before that. And then we've got Everton at home on the final day of the season. If it goes to the last game and say we go 1-0 down and we're still in the race, I really hope that, that fans stick around and fans really get behind the team because we need that. We need that support. It's a real shame when fans leave early. Um, and by the way, just, just quick before I go on to the next one, I, I know there's people that have opinions that like people pay their money, they're entitled to do what they want. I respect that view. I don't agree with it necessarily in the sense of um, that means they should just up and leave whenever they want. I, I think that there is an encouragement to stay. I really think there should be an encouragement to say, I get the frustration around being told what to do. Some people don't like it. Some people want to have the right to leave, but I'd encourage you really to stay. And if you're not willing to, you're not willing to be the, the person that when we go 1-0 down in the 80th minute is going to leave on 10 minutes. I'd rather you gave your ticket to someone else. I really would. Someone who is going to stand. Someone that is going to stay. Someone that is going to scream their lungs out. Because that's what I'd rather um, than someone that leaves 10 minutes for the end of the performance. Um, Granit Xhaka uh, won the league, of course, at the weekend with Bayer Leverkusen in an unbelievable season display. Um by Leverkusen have been absolutely fantastic. But he was asked actually about Arsenal and he says they lost 2-0 to Aston Villa, but still very close is everything. They know I'm still in contact with many teammates with the club and I wish them luck and hopefully they can do it this year because last year was very close. Hopefully they can do it this year. So the team has the support of Granit Xhaka. He's uh, sending a very kind message and a very big congratulations to Granit for, you know, for, uh, for you know, just what an achievement by Leverkusen have done. Yes, I'd wish that we had Man City having a season like Bayern Munich have had uh, to some degree, but still to, to do it unbeaten, to, to do it in the way they've done it is an unbelievable um, piece of, of work. And my goodness me, the fans, I've seen so many fans that used to batter Granit Xhaka um, all of a sudden coming around and now saying that it was a mistake to sell him. I guess full circles do exist. Now, uh, Zinchenko, of course, has been and, and come in for plenty of scrutiny in the last week. Um, but James McNicholas of The Athletic has been speaking about his future and said that at the moment there are no current talks ongoing about a potential deal uh, with two years remaining on Zinchenko's contact. That does tend to be the threshold of when Arsenal make decisions on players. And at the moment, I've heard nothing on this, but James has got very, very good connections indeed and very um, well spoken on the topic is that, yeah, there's there's not suggestions that he is in talks with the club over a new deal at this moment in time. What that means for the future, we don't know. But there's also suggestions, and we know this and we've spoken about this, is that Arsenal are interested in signing a fullback still. A left back is said to still be on the cards, even with Yuri and Timber, of course, because he can play so in so many different positions. Um, that a left back is still said to be on the list of potential signings for the summer. So could that mean that Zinchenko moves on from Arsenal in the summer? We'll have to wait and see. I, th I think he's a good player. I, I don't. I don't agree with the, the 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 abuse that he's got. I think he's had some really good games this season, and some recency bias has certainly flipped the script somewhat. But he was poor against Aston Villa and should have been taken off earlier. And that's on Arteta more than it is Zinchenko to. Um, to make that call. He should have been brought off and we said this and we've been saying this the last couple of days. He should have been brought off sooner and wasn't. Um, and that's on Arteta more than it is Zinchenko. 
Now, Open Training will reveal the latest insight into the squad. I'm going to be heading off to the Shoba Realty Training Center a little bit later on this morning to give you an insight into what is going on at the training ground. Of course, we only get a glimpse of the start of the training session um, and uh, a look into who has started uh, the training session. So if Erdogan is indeed there, you'll be first to know. If you're following my Twitter account at Tom Cantor Media, I'll be making sure to inform you all from there as to who is and who isn't present at the training ground around 11 o'clock UK time this morning. So uh, do look out for that. Um, Odegaard is the one that is obviously the biggest one in question, potentially. Um, everybody else still very much we expect to be ready and fit and available. But uh, Odegaard, of course, who didn't manage to finish the Sunday game and came off with what Arteta said it was a, a leg issue. And then, of course, he had that kick to the chest as well. Hopefully he's going to be fine, um, but you'll know far more than I will. Uh, no, no, you'll, you'll know exactly what I will uh, come around uh, just after 11 o'clock this morning. And lastly, of course, with it being the day before the game, Mikel Arteta will face the press ahead of the game against Bayern Munich. The press conference is later tonight uh, at the Allianz Arena. It was a later press conference uh, in the evening, so around 6, 7 o'clock, I think, UK time. Uh, we'll hear the latest from Arteta in terms of team news. So you make sure that you are across that. We'll have a, a press conference blog on football.london. And then tomorrow morning, we'll, of course, break down everything that Arteta speaks about in that press conference as well. So make sure you subscribe with those notifications turned on so you don't miss any content. Um, but you can also get your hands on a fantastic prize. There's only a few days left, I believe. Um, in fact, no, I think there's a week left after this one uh, of the Thierry Henry competition uh, to win a signed and framed Thierry Henry sh uh, shirt with a built-in TV screen playing some of the icon's best periods at the club there's some instant win prizes like a signed and framed Patrick Vieira shirt a signed Gilberto shirt a signed Lundberg shirt and a signed Arsene Wenger Invincibles Arsenal shirt as well so all the information is down in the description in the link that you can go and click uh, best of luck to those that get involved in it is UK only right let's go to part two and your questions right after this Okay, part two. Shall we jump into the chat box and tackle some of your questions? Um, Clive's asking for Gutierrez as left back, the uh, Real Madrid loanee that's currently at Girona. And uh, says, Tom, you can say I was right. Print screen that, please. I love that you called it screen print. Um, <laughs> screen print it. I'll, I'll screen print it, Clive. I will. I'll screen print it, mate. Um, Matt G says, uh, Tom, can you please talk about Chelsea players fighting over who was going to take the penalty? I don't really want to talk about Chelsea. They won really, really well. And Cole Palmer is a, a really big threat. What a player he's turning out to be. Um, and uh, it's very frustrating to see that they managed to get him. Of all the money they've spent, of all the huge deals they've invested in that have just flopped, you know, that just have not been good. Um, like Caicedo, for instance, of course. Uh, and Kunku's not been able to do it because he's had so many injuries. Um, you think about some of the signs they've made. It's so frustrating to see that one of them has actually paid off in such a huge way. But uh, it's it just still shows that petulance. It still shows that fractured uh, fractured nature in that um, in that Chelsea squad. Hopefully, uh, it, it kind of feeds into the game when they come to the Emirates. You know, just over a, well, actually in in a week's time, just over um, they will be at Arsenal next week. Um, Rich says, Tom, just curious about this one. You pronounce Doman like judo um, and not like down um i don't know what you mean does this come from the club i uh is it downman i guess uh, rather than doman um i love that you use judo and down as different ways to pronounce it i don't know I, it, it could be downman it could be doman i don't know maybe it's downman I, I don't have any specific insight in the pronunciation of of uh uh of max's name so uh i'm just presuming until i get told otherwise which is what i usually do um, Asad says, Hey Tom, if you can, please give my daughter a quick shout. Her name is Alicia, and she's a massive Bukar Saka fan. Alicia, massive shout out to you. And uh, I hope that Saka can bring it home between now and the end of the season. And Clive says he's old and he needs help with this. And Robert says, Clive, don't uh, don't us oldens miss that teletext. <laughs> hey, 
even at 29, I used to have to use Teletext back in the day on a Saturday. Don't you worry. Still very much was something back when I was a kid uh, that I was still using as well. Uh, Abby says, print screen was a verb that was on a keyboard. Screen print is a noun. It sounds better. <laughs> I mean, Clive's starting a new trend here. Um, uh, Ragamon says, uh, Arteta is the reason that we lost to Villa. He's the reason we bottled last season and the top four the season before. He's inexperienced. He's revamped the club, but it's time to bring in a winner of a manager. Um, I wish that Ragamon was on the phone-in show yesterday because whilst I don't agree, and I think that's a, a wild opinion, um, it would have been great to see um, Ragamon come on the show because we had a few people that were questioning the manager that wanted to change the manager. I don't necessarily think that the, the opinion stacked up or kind of held too much weight. The solutions that they had didn't really work. Um, but uh, it's always funny people talk about like the bottling of the top four or the bottling of the, the league when ironically no one expected either of those two things to happen in those seasons everyone was thinking well arsenal in in 22 23 um were sorry in 21 22 were looking to be a side that just got back into europe they ended up challenging for the top four despite no one thinking that they would and they just missed out on it um in 22 23 no one thought that they would compete for the title they thought they would just be aiming for top four. They did that comfortably and overachieved, yet it was called a bottling. And then this season, of course, the expectation has been to be a better title can challenger from my perspective. I can't expect Arsenal to win the league because Manchester City exist. It's as simple as that. We can hope that we can try and oust them uh, and overachieve in that sense. But it was always about being a better title challenger. And we certainly have done that this season as well. And we are closer than we were this time last year. So it's strange how people with different points of views. It's just lenses, isn't it? It's just ways different people, different people of different lenses view different things in different ways. Um, I think it's mad to think Arteta should go. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's, we've lost one game in the league in 2024, and that's what ultimately can cost you a title, and that's what will separate it. But they never have a solution. You know, we had obviously Ghost Bella come on the show yesterday and talk about Inzaghi and saying we should sign Inzaghi because he's got a winning mentality. And yet when you ask somebody who they want and why they want them, it just kind of falls apart at that point. Saying the winning mentality. If you don't think Arteta has not got a winning mentality, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think you've been watching closely enough if you don't think Arteta has got a winning mentality. Um, Kristen says, player, the, uh, player for player, I believe that we have a better team than Leverkusen. Is Alonso the reason why they have not bottled a game all season? Um, they're in a different league, Tristan, uh, playing in different competitions to us. Uh, obviously, it's a different challenge. Um, they still have beaten some very big teams, like Bayern Munich, for instance. They won very comfortably against 3 0, I think it was at the time. Bayern haven't been the side, of course, that um, they have been in recent seasons, but. He's been a very good manager for them, Tristan. You can't say that he's not. He's done brilliant things. They play a very different style to, to Arsenal. They play with those fullbacks, uh, those wingbacks, sorry, in Grimaldo and Frimpong. They haven't really suffered too much in terms of injury issues all through the campaign. Their key players have stayed fit the entire time, pretty much. Um, and that's been a big, big boost to them also. So uh, sometimes things just have to fall into place. And for Bayer Leverkusen, they have fallen into place very well. And they've built on the foundation and they've... They've really done a, a brilliant, brilliant job. Um, Andrew says, it's not Arteta's fault that we didn't win. I, I think that it, to a degree it is. Um, I, I, sorry, I, I think that, oh, I'm going to read this point again because actually I think they raise a good point. It's not Arteta's fault we didn't win, but it's his that we lost. The changes were terrible and the game plan didn't make sense. He should defend the second and bring in the players for that. I, I think that Arteta, I think question marks about the lineup from the start don't necessarily hold too much weight because the first half performance was good. All it was lacking was a finish. And so Arteta set us up to win that game. The problem was that Arteta didn't react in the second half effectively enough. Um, and for that reason, we ended up not getting the result that we wanted. And that definitely falls. Without a doubt, the reason why we lost falls back on Arteta more than anyone else. Yet on Sunday, he didn't make the correct changes. Um, and that second half was, was not good enough. But suggestions that the lineup was wrong or that he changed too much with the lineup... Um, it just doesn't work because the first half performance was good. The, 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 the tactics were good. The, the, we got in behind so many times. We created so many chances. We should have been clear by half time, and we wasn't. I'll tell you, I can't get the ball in the net himself, but he set the team up in the best possible way to do that on the day. They just didn't execute it. But in the second half, it falls on Arteta for not reacting and not changing and not being quick enough with certain changes in the team. And uh, he waited too long specifically with the Zinchenko substitution. That, that was a big, big error. 
Um, Cal says, am I the only one who gets irritated by the term bottled? Uh, I'm even reserved to use it in a team like Spurs after last season, seeing how the players and manager go through quite uncomfortably. I, I had the most ridiculous comment on the video yesterday, and I will read it out because it just, I think, shows you how broad of a spectrum of views we can find. This was the uh, the comment uh, from Ben, who is in our chat box uh, a fair amount, uh, but I disagree wildly with this point. It says, for those asking who we could pick up if we sacked Arteta, here are some options that have won the league titles or at least one trophy in half a decade, which, by the way, Arteta has also done that. Um, Amorim, but he's going to go to Liverpool, we know that. Zidane, he's not coming to Arsenal. Spalletti, uh, look at Napoli. Um, Nagelsmann is going to go off to Bayern Munich, obviously already at Germany at the moment. Inzaghi. I mean, the Inzaghi ones, I don't get. We talked about that yesterday. The people that want Inzaghi can't even tell me the formation he plays. Hansi Flick, did you see Germany? And says, we can't keep challenging and improving without some result. We're damn near turning into Spurs. You know, I don't mind someone suggesting some names, but you want to compare this to Tottenham? Get real. Honestly, I, 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 I struggle for words. I really struggle for words. This being this this Arsenal team, what it's doing, how it's challenged the great, oh, the greatest and most competitive Premier League side in in the league's history. This Premier League team of City question marks about stuff that you know what I'm re re uh, referring to. There's question marks there, absolutely. And in the next two years, you know, will the chickens come home to roost? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that aside. Pep Guardiola has constructed the most dominant Premier League team, I feel, in Premier League history. You could argue that Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United team and the Premier Leagues that he won with Manchester United are a step above still because he's won more. But I think in the competitivity, the competitiveness of this Premier League in the last decade, this Pep Guardiola Manchester City team is unlike nothing we have seen before. With the, the resources they've had, the, the depth of squad they've had, the ability they've had to win a treble, Champions League, FA Cups, Premier League titles, in so in an era in which obviously Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool have existed, in Antonio Conte's uh, Chelsea side have existed, they've still managed to um, be so incredibly dominant. The amount of 90 point plus seasons they've had is a joke. You can't drop more than five to six games, really, at times. You know, you can't afford to drop more than really six to eight games in a season. That's the record. You have to win at least 30 games, probably, um, to have a chance of beating this City side at times. It's it's mad. It's crazy. Um, and so to suggest that this Arsenal team that are going and have beaten this Man City team this season and then drawn at the Etihad and been able to just be two points off it with six games to go, and we'll have to wait and see what happens to now and in the season. To compare that and say that we have an element of Tottenham about us is the most... Absent minded, absent minded and disrespectful view of this football club. I, I cannot fathom how you can label this anything like Tottenham Hotspur. Unbelievable. And and on that point about you know the the bottling thing, look, I, it's a horrible term because it really does undermine the the work that goes in and the context of of the league and where things are. If Man City win, it's just like, yeah, of course they did. You know, and, and there isn't a single person that can realistically argue at the start of the season that Man City weren't favourites for every single trophy. And that's what you're up against. So if you finish second to that and then sack a cut or your argument is that you want to sack them because they didn't overachieve and beat the side that were favourites to win everything, it just doesn't make any sense, especially when you push them all the way. If you were miles off them and you regressed, without question, if you are regressing as a club, you need to make change. It just makes sense to make change. If you are regressing as a side, you should make changes. But Arsenal are doing anything but regressing as a team. We are continually moving forwards. We are continually improving. And we are getting closer to that ultimate goal. First season that we've been back in the Champions League. And we've got a chance to go to Germany and reach a semi-final for the first time in goodness knows how long. I think it was Man United we played in the semi-final the last time we reached the stage. And that was late noughties. You know, the first time of asking back in the Champions League, we're back in the quarterfinal with a chance of reaching the semis. You know, it's crazy to me what some people... And I, may, maybe it's... Um, I don't... I, I, I actually can't pinpoint necessarily what it is because there is a spectrum of ages. I see young fans having these views. I see older fans having these views. I see middle-aged people having these views. So I don't think it's necessarily we can 
pinpoint, oh, it's a young generation coming in that never experienced the hardships, or it's the older generation that had experience of more golden eras and more experience of winning things back in the day. I never like it when I had a comment the other day saying um, something along the lines of, if George Graham had this squad, we'd have won the league. And I'm like, no, we wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. George Graham was from a different time, a different era, and football was different. The sport was different. Different players back then that suited him. George Graham wouldn't be winning anything with this team. It's, a, it's not his team. You know, it's a completely different period in 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 the sport. It doesn't make sense. I get where people are coming from, but if anything, Arsenal being one of the best defensive sides, if not the best defensive team in the league this season. So yeah, the whole bottling term is is obviously often used as quite an inflammatory comment to get a reaction, which it has. <laughs> so I guess it's worked again. Um, Boss Muller says, people remember this is the first defeat of the year um, in the league, uh, and some want Arteta out. Uh, I mean, to be fair, they have they have emerged from the woodwork. They've been very quiet. I I I, I don't get frustrated anymore. I see names in my chat box after defeats or after draws that are never there when we win. Some people are there only when they lose or only when Arsenal draw because that's who they are as people. You know, that's when they emerge. That's when their energy comes. That's when they really do make themselves known. I don't know why you'd live your life that way. I really don't. I, put, I tweeted after the Villa game saying I could never be a pessimist. I just couldn't do it. I could not be a pessimistic person. Imagine how you only get one chance at life. Imagine being, imagine being pessimistic about it. I know some people say it's a coping mechanism for some. I just couldn't do it. I just I could not do it. I could not look at every single scenario, every single outcome with a um with a negative lens. I just couldn't. Not at all. And that's why I challenge the views. That's why we challenge the views that, that come out. Um, because usually they don't have too much weight to them. Um, let's go. Come on, Yaguna says, uh, what are we expecting Ramsdale to be sold for? Uh, surely there's a decent profit to be made. I think there should be. I think Arsenal should be looking for upwards of 30 million pounds for Aaron Ramsdale. And and hopefully we'll get that in the summer. Uh, Ian says, you say the Premier League is very competitive. What is the average difference in points between the top two and the rest of the 10 uh, before that? Interesting stat to know. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily a fair way of judging it because there is gaps um, between those points in the league. If you, if you don't think that the Premier League is a competitive league, I don't know what to tell you because, and it's not a case of looking at the point gap between the top two sides and the rest because within those different brackets, you've got teams that are so incredibly dominant, of course, but you've got teams that are still further down the table taking points off these big sides on more than a regular occasion that have spent humongous amounts of money. You know, if you if you'd have put a side like Aston Villa into certain European leagues this season, it would be curious where they would have finished. You know, yeah, and you could have said that about Brighton last season. You know, and how competitive they were under Roberto De Zerbi. Less so this season. You could have said about Newcastle last season. If you don't think the the, the Premier League is exceptionally competitive, it's 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 different. I know that people like to call it like a modern day Bundesliga in some ways, but that's only because of City. It doesn't mean that the rest of the league isn't incredibly competitive because it, is. it doesn't mean that every other team that you play in that league isn't still a big challenge because it is. Unless you're Manchester City, usually. And that's the difference. But it's still an incredibly competitive league from the perspective of, of where Arsenal are at as well. Um, Ragaman says, praise Arteta for what exactly? One FA Cup in five years. This ain't West Ham. Raise your standards. Oh, there it is. Right, where it is. Get your bingo cards out, people. Hold on, I think I put mine somewhere. Where's my bingo card? Yeah, there it is. Hold on. Raise, stand. Yes, I did write it down. I'm just going to tick that off my uh, Arteta out bingo card. There it is. Sorry, I want to continue read, reading Ragamon's message. If we lose to Bayern on Wednesday and drop more points in the league, then Arteta has to go. Oh, I think I've got that as well. Arteta has to go. Yes. That's true. I've had Arteta out. Arteta, Arteta has to go and raise your standards. I've had three. I think they've all come from Ragamon as well. Let's see if he comes out of any more before, between now and the end of the season. Look, if you want to talk about raising standards, right? You want to talk about raising standards. From the perspective of a person who at 29 years of age has seen Arsenal from the Arsene Wenger golden era all the way through to now, I know what that experience was like in the middle. What I call the wasteland years of Arsenal where we weren't able to be competitive because we were paying off the stadium even though I think we could have spent more. We could have invested more smartly uh, and we probably should have made a decision on Wenger earlier. As a club, we regressed. As a club, we made the wrong decision in appointing Unai Emery. We probably needed to have that wrong appointment to be where we are now. We probably needed to have that mistake in Unai Emery to get to where we are now, but we regressed. And when Arteta took over, he took over a mess. 
He took over a club without standards, ironically. He took over a club without principles. He took over a club that with a fractured dressing room. He took over a club that had no ambition at all of winning a title. The idea of Arsenal winning a league was entirely unthinkable when Arteta took over this club. No one was speaking about that. The only people who were saying that Arsenal should be winning the league were talking about it because of what Arsenal are as a club. The stature, the size of them. A sleeping giant, Arsenal were often called. And what Arteta has done is he's introduced standards at this football club. He's got rid of the riffraff. He's got rid of the players that didn't fit. He's got rid of the players that didn't want to work to the principles and the expectations of this football club, which is to compete at the highest level as a team. He's gone into the market and for the first time in a decade addressed problems that we had known and needed addressing for so many years. We were crying out for Arsenal to go and sign Patrick Vieira and Gilberto Silva replacements. And in his first summer, he brought in Thomas Partey. We've been crying out for years for Arsenal to sign a top centre-back. He went out and got Gabriel Magalhaes and turned him into that. We've been crying out for Arsenal to push forwards, to progress, to get back to the top. And the difference between the top today and the top 22, 20 years ago is that it isn't Mourinho's Chelsea at the top. It's not Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United at the top. The top of the Premier League today is a team that have had resources like no other since their massive takeover, of course, around the year 2010. And have spent and spent and spent and spent with little to no restrictions when it started. So they have reached a stage now where they can be compliant with FFP. They can be compliant with profit and sustainability regulations because they make so much revenue from what they win now. It's, it's, it's too late. It's too late for those types of restrictions that are battering Forest and battering Everton to have a chance. And that team has the best manager, arguably of all time in charge. It has bought the best players year on year on year and kept them. And it has been able to sign the best players on top of that and put them on the bench, like Grealish, for instance. Like Riyad Mahrez previously before he left. They've now signed players and brought through players as well, like Foden and Rico Lewis, because they've invested in their youth academy the whole time they've been doing this as well. And they're a side that have just won the treble with the best striker in the world who's only 20 no, he's only four. He's four years old, Erling Haaland. He's still got 20 years ahead of him. They've won the treble with him. And they've got one of the best young players coming through. They've got an amazing squad that is expected to be better. And I'm not even going to mention the stuff that you would like to talk about, but I'm not going to mention that for very obvious reasons. And that is what Arsenal are up against now. And Arteta has taken Arsenal to a place where they are now expected to either beat them or for some, you get sacked. That's the expectation of stuff. That's what some people say are standards. Now, I disagree with that because I think that's ludicrous. I think it's absolutely hyper hyperbolic and I think it's crazy. The time that will come when Arteta needs to go is if Arsenal regress, if Arsenal go backwards, if Arteta loses it, you know, and it can happen. And if that does happen, the club comes first because nobody is bigger than this football club. Arsenal is the biggest thing to us. And there is no one person bigger than it. And if Arteta makes mistakes, if Arteta loses his way, if Arteta goes backwards and subsequently Arsenal go backwards, then a decision needs to be made. But whilst Arsenal are moving in one direction, which is forwards and progressing and being more competitive and continuing to make important decisions in the market and make important decisions that have a direct impact upon our competitivity, that have broken records, that have changed the mould, that have raised the standards, that have meant that we've gone to Anfield and the Etihad and held those teams at bay. And then when they've come to the Emirates, we've put them to the sword and beaten them. That is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be that was competing at the top. I could never be a fan that says, I expect to win those, those, those tournaments. I expect to win those trophies because I don't think I can have that expectation because of the context of what we exist as a club in, upon what the opposition is to us. I could never be that fan. And if you are that fan, I'm probably not the person you want to listen to because you're never going to see my point of view. And that's absolutely fine. I'm never going to be in your space. I'm never going to be able to get in your headspace, ever. I'm never going to be able to get there. So this probably isn't the place for you if that's the case. But if you're willing to have an open mind and listen, an open mind and discuss things, 
and try to see it from a different point of view, then this is going to be the place for you. This is going to be a place for a conversation we can have. But at the end of the day, the idea of like raise your standards means nothing. They're empty words because it's in the context of this Premier League of where we sit right now. Raising your standards is if you don't beat this Manchester City team, you deserve to go. And that's not raising standards. That's insanity. And there's a difference between those two things. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate your time as always. I've got to shoot because I've got to go up to Arsenal's training centre and to have a look at the open training session and get the latest information regarding our team. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing Martin Odegaard involved. We're keeping those fingers crossed that very much he is going to be there. And I'll report back um, so you can follow all of that on football.london. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy yourselves. As always, look after yourselves. If you need to take some time away from the club, away from football, please do it. I implore you. I encourage you to do so. Uh, please do help us to reach 1K every single day and uh, help us on our way to that target. And uh, I will be back potentially later on tonight with a preview ahead of the game against Bayern. But if not, certainly a show tomorrow morning breaking down Mikel Arteta's press conference from this evening as well. Have a brilliant morning, afternoon and evening wherever you happen to be in the world. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>